yeah, we're live. We are live. Hello. It's getting started, getting used to this. Because I'm um, really used to drawing and uh, teaching drawing, but not live streaming, right? It's something different, something new. Now, yeah, I really want you to have the best experience possible with this. Okay, so let's get cracking. So what do we have here? Some cubes, okay? Cubes, very important. Simple volumes, simple primitives, right? So a couple of cubes, a couple more cubes with a couple of tetrahedra, which are sectioned right, by means of planar changes. Okay, another cube, very good, very good. These are planar changes again. We are sectioning a cube and then uh, placing it on its uh, you know, chamfered uh, corner, right? And this is a cube sitting on three spheres. And we are back to simple cubes. Okay, so question number one, I imagine, like if you're starting off, uh, by the way, I want you to go and if you haven't yet, just go and grab the five day intensive, right? It's free. You just, uh, you know, opt in and I'll send you the, uh, the five lessons, okay? That's mandatory, okay? What's happening here? There always has to be something that's off. So, cubes typically have three positions. So, position number one is this one, where you see it as a... Right, Photoshop isn't working. Yeah, one moment, technical difficulties. You have to have something that doesn't work, right? But no worries, we had this time and time again. You know, it's software, it happens. It's not perfect. Uh, this is basically position number one. Yeah. Well, that's being a... No, I want to say the word. Beautiful. Yeah, just one second. Right, how's everybody doing? Any questions, anything, just uh, hit me up. stuff and that's not working it's really good when it is though Photoshop is very very good for computer graphics and for architecture graphics you basically learn Photoshop you can do a lot of things there we go and let's grab these uh, these drawings again Okay, doesn't work, blah blah blah. Right, okay. So, cubes have three positions. Position number one, in planar view it looks like a square, and in frontal view it looks like a square again, right? Position number two, you rotate it at 45 degrees, and then in frontal view it's going to look kind of like a rectangle, okay? And uh, that's very interesting. In position number three, you've got the cube sitting on a spatial diagonal. Okay. Very important stuff. Uh, by the way, you do this in triple projection all the time. Right? So you have that third view. Okay, but fortunately I didn't create a new layer. So I'll just go back. It's going to be a lesson in software as well. No worries. Right. One second. So you need to have the th uh, triple projection as well. For this third position cube, the triple projection looks something like this. Okay. And with the dashed lines behind it. Okay, very good, very nice. So what do we have here? We've got basically the triple projection of the cube sitting in its third position. Then we've got the axis and the metric for this. Okay, 
Uh, this specific assignment is about placing a cube on its spatial diagonal and then uh, merging or rather keeping it in perfect balance by adding two extra cubes. So one here, tangent here, and the other one tangent here. In planar view, obviously the tangency can be symmetrical, as in this cube just coincides with the axis of symmetry. Okay. Then you go in the side view and you've got the same thing, right? Or it can be uh, you know, offset from the axis of symmetry. Either way, both work. And both need to be translated in axonometric. And then the challenge is, how do you draw this cube like this in axonometric? Because a regular cube, you probably know already how to do it. You know, you've probably seen the five-day intensive. If not, grab the five-day intensive. If I was asking me about free stuff, freebies. This is the freebie. You go through, I think, five lessons and a bonus lesson, and you, you, you're set, right? You can start understanding the stuff I'm talk, talking to you about, okay? Because right now it might seem just weird, just different, okay? It's like, what is this? Like, what's this? Damn, it's just, yeah, you, you can't see it, right? Let's see if there's any questions or anything, right? Let me just, uh, oh yeah. Okay, so going back, we've got our cube set here, and obviously it's going to have cast shadows, 60 degrees in the horizontal towards the right hand side, 60 degrees in the horizontal, probably change to a graphics tablet soon enough because I don't want you to hear these you know, clicking sounds. Right, you probably are familiar with the cast shadows, again if you're not, 5 day intensive, go for it, okay. Um, other than that, You've got um, the shadow for the cube sitting on a spatial diagonal. But how are we going to draw this cube on a spatial diagonal? Right? Hopefully you've taken notes by now, right? How are we going to draw this cube on a spatial diagonal? Well, the easiest way is to draw these uh, little triangles. So this is going to be the axis of symmetry with the little triangles and then here and here, I'll just do this in reverse, you've got the width edges, right? These ones, right? And obviously you draw them, you copy the width from planar view. This has to make sense, right? Okay. And then you connect everything up and you get two faces. And then you connect those up, and uh, that's it. Okay, this is your cube, this one here. Although I'm not sure about this proportions, these proportions here. Okay, this is going to take at least two hours to, to apply all of the stuff that I'm telling you about and uh, get decent results. We've got lessons on this. Um, again, freebies, freebies everywhere, 5-day intensive, I, I don't think this, uh, this is covered in the 5-day intensive because it's a bit advanced, but you can, um, you know, just follow along, with, uh, you know, drawing on your drawing board, right? Okay, any questions, anything, chat rate, no, no, nothing, no? Okay, I'm off, back to drawing. Okay, so what do we have here? We need to draw the cast shadows. Obviously, in axonometric, these are going to be all parallel, right? 60 degrees in the horizontal, and you get the point, the cast shadow from this tip here. Then from the middle, where does the middle intersect? Boom and width here. You get like a line like this, parallel to the initial line. Then we can construct the 60 degrees in the horizontal towards the right, and we've got this point here. Okay. And we've got our cast shadow projection. Hopefully it makes sense. Again, it has to make sense. Right, and you can do the same. The, don't forget, the cast shadows for axonometrics are always going to be 60 degrees. Okay? Um, that's just the logic of it. Uh, 
it's just the, base, the best 60 degrees and a horizontal direction. That's the best way to see this through, okay, as a uh, projection. And obviously, for the back face, um, again, an, e an easy way would be just to construct this, construct the top, so we've got two points, then we grab the height, I know there's a lot of lines right now, let me just go for, for green. Then you've got these heights again, 60 degrees and a horizontal. Okay, so you have point, 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 and point. You connect these up, and then you connect both of the projections. So this is the trick, please note this one down. This, uh, the, the section, the projection, right? You get it. Uh, the the projection of the full projection because that's what a cast shadow is it's a projection of a volume on a plane okay you got a direction of projection and then you project the volume on the plane the easiest way to project one of these complex volumes is to do the two opposing faces right we did these uh, little shapes and then connect them up okay makes sense any questions just let me know if you're watching this on a replay then uh, hit me up on the um, comments box below yeah, there's multiple assignments on cubes. I think there's around 50, 50 assignments that you kind of want to know, right? You, you learn them, you learn about them, you study them, you draw them, and then you're set for life. You don't need to redo them a thousand times, right? Um, these are the beginner ones. A cube, number one, a cube sitting between two other cubes, a cube with the largest sphere, just as a side note, how do you fit the largest sphere possible inside this cube? Put in the third position, that's very nice. If you remember the by third position, this one here. Okay. This is going to fry your brain basically, so don't worry too much about it. Right? And then put it in the third position, and then obviously you get this. This is the radius, and you draw a circle boom and that circle is going to be our sphere you see there's a lot of like free space around it because yeah the, the cube is you know a spatial diagonal it's going in there's not enough mass yet it appears like there's a lot of space but it really isn't okay and uh how are you going to draw this next and matter well you do the cube on the spatial diagonal that's very nice and then Obviously, you intersect two of these diagonals, you get the middle, which is this point here, and you can draw the horizontal ellipse, right? And then the sphere. Okay, and that's our assignment, basically. You can go for the cast shadows again, similar to these. Right, any questions, anything? No, nothing. Yay, good, 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 good. Okay, let's go now for the... Um, the cube sitting on a chamfered face, right? Planar changes. Um, actually, no, let's go for this. This would be assignment number three. Right? <coughs> you need to get this, uh, yeah, this third position thing. You need to understand it 100%, okay? And then, after that, you're able to uh, to basically use the cube and actually actually in fairness you know you, you understand the cube on a, on a spatial diagonal by doing all these weird assignments okay let me just get a sip of coke damn damn it's fine no worries yeah let's make this happen so We've got this cube on a special spatial diagonal. Three spheres connect uh, tangent spheres. They form an equal triangle, right? With their three centers. Okay. And from the middle, vertical line. Okay, and that's our cube. 
the tangency, so basically a tangency between two volumes is where the volumes touch. Okay? They're tangent. The tangency shows right in specific positions. You can see it here. Does it make sense? You know, you're looking this way, and the tangency is going to be on this axis here. Boom, boom, boom. And the easiest way to do this tangency, to draw it, is by doing exactly this. Okay, so I'm going to get from the center of the sphere, I'm going to draw a perpendicular line. There's going to be this point here, and this is going to be the tangency point. And then I draw a parallel line to the initial cube, draw the cube again, and that's our tangency point, basically. Because let's not forget the section through this cube at this level. What is it going to look like if we draw it? Like an even triangle, right? You see it here. Exactly this bad boy, right? It's kind of like a mix between the two assignments, okay? You draw it in the frontal view. Planar view is going to look 100% the same. You agree? Uh, any height you put the cube at is still going to have the same planar view, right? Then obviously the side view, and then you're off to uh, visibility, to adding you know lines and uh, you know dashed lines for the lines, uh, the volumes that you don't see, and uh, right? Then you have to go for axonometric. Axonometric is really the axonometric is really easy to draw, right? Sort out the centers for the spheres. Boom, draw them. And then copy this height here. Obviously, you can, you can start from the ground plane. I recommend every time you're doing technical drawing. Again, architecture drawing is a skill, okay? So it's not 100% theory. You need to, um, to basically have a couple of rules of thumb um, for technical drawing, for descriptive geometry. 80% of your drawings are all going to be the same, right? You want to optimize this. And 20% is going to be really weird. Okay, stuff that you can't, can't guess, can't anything, right? So um, I recommend you, you focus on this 80%, like having the same approach every time. This is how you build up speed, by the way, right? And speed of thinking. Uh, any questions? No, no, no worries. Back to the drawing board. So, how are we going to do this? Well, you can start from the ground level. You get this radius here. There's multiple ways of doing this, but basically, yeah. I'm just focusing on this. And you just copy the um, radius going down, goes in, you copy this segment here, add it here, go up, and then you copy this dimension, which I don't know if it's the radius or not. It might be, it might not be. Sometimes lines overlap, right? Sometimes they do, it, sometimes that's an optical illusion, okay? So we don't care about that. We, we're not thinking this way. We're, we're trying to figure out the pattern, not just guesstimate stuff. Right. Okay, so we got that. And then obviously again, spatial diagonal. Remember? Yeah, remember? The little triangles. Keep in mind there's two variations for the cube. The one we previously did had the uh actually no. One moment, one moment, one second. This one has the uh smaller face towards the viewer. This other one has the larger face towards the viewer, right? Obviously this is going to create a plan. Right, this is the section for our cube, right? Then we are just going to add the width. And then connecting everything up. Okay? And that's our volume. The spheres are, you know, you draw an ellipse and then you draw a circle from that ellipse. And cast shadow wise, you know, obviously for spheres, you just get the maximum ellipse and you project it down. 
maximum ellipse and you project that down project everything down okay and that's how you basically draw cast shadows for spheres and for the cube exactly as before only that we've got a you know larger height okay is this making uh, sense i have to as a short recap the three positions of a cube a cube sitting between two other cubes the largest sphere inside of a cube right triple projection uh, people call it you know different ways in different parts of the world but you could call it parallel projection you could call it planar view frontal view and side view i go for triple projection because it's projecting in three views at the same time right it's good to understand it this way right sometimes the important things you don't want to make them ex you know exaggerate their intellectual level you know just go for you know just common sense stuff right sometimes when they're difficult just go for the common sense right the opposing view is true as well it's really hard to get stuff that's common sense in architecture right okay we've got the sphere here you could use some cast shadows exactly the same principle as before boom with this thing you've got the explanations like uh, 10 minutes um, you know, back then this thing with the tangency on three spheres and let's look at a a cube with a planar change okay just the standard planar change because there's variations okay um, let's have a look any questions anything now okay. boom so what am I talking about a planar change well imagine you've got a cube and you chamfer one of its faces right so we got this little cube here a little cube here and we chamfer the tip here right and then we flip it around somehow so it sits on that chamfered face this little chamfered face here how is this going to look like in frontal view? Well, if you look at it this way, it's going to look like a square with a little line here, exactly this one. Okay, so it does make sense. It's always going to make sense. It's always going to look exactly the same, right? Um, the isometric with the projections, here you just got plane, a, a planar view and a frontal view. Right, we're not going to go for the triple projection this time. Um, the isometric, the 3D technical drawing with the 2D technical drawing, they're always going to look the same, right? Okay, and then we go for what? For, well, basically the planar view. How's that going to look like if you're looking at this uh, drawing here? It's going to have a little line here where the chamfer, chamfered uh, thing is, right? The plane, okay? Right, let's do some planar changes. Well, the first planar change, if this is OX, let me just go for a different color. Guys, again, if you haven't, uh, haven't heard, go for the five day intensive, right? Just to get started with architectural drawing. Boom. So it's OX, right? Let's go for O1, X1. Need to reset my PC. Unfortunately, I left it on for like probably a week and uh, yeah, software just crashes. Right, so no, never mind that. Um, we've got the uh, new O1, X1, and you can imagine that the projection is going to go this way, right? The objective is to get this little plane and see it as a straight line, just like this. So we're doing the projection, and then it sits like that. Okay, the little plane is going to become like a line, which is very good. You could then go and draw the perpendiculars. Let's just add everything here in the uh, right in the frontal view. Basically, copying when you've got inclined angles angles sorry uh, inclined planes inclined uh, angles inclined uh, stuff just go for the height 
just say this is A and the uh, width which would be B right and we use that to geometrically construct the thing okay good 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 Let's see if we could do exactly that here okay boom and we got our frontal view for planar view obviously we need to use the logic this is technical drawing logic and uh, you're not going to like the way I explain it it's very simple but your brain can't get it yet okay yet so uh, <clears throat> it's going to be something like you need to understand that this width here right is going to be this width here right and it's going to be this width here. Okay, because just of the position of the section. Putting this down. Boom, boom, boom. Right? The way I recommend you draw all planar changes. I've done these probably thousands of times, so there's no you don't need to, to just do things blindly. There's shortcuts. Like, you know, you can do this the smart way and you can do this the really complicated way. Right. And uh, the smart way would be for you to basically draw this without you playing the change like it would be a full volume okay and then obviously you copy the dimension from here to the compass or a piece of paper I recommend the piece of paper because it's easiest you copy it and then you, you draw the OX axis this is going to generate a little section I'll just color it with green for the little section this line down one second and this is our little triangle for the little section right how are we going to how are we going to draw this in the next in the metric we'll basically draw the full volume copy this height right and then where 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 the height hits Boom, go for a line this way, copy this line from here, go for a line this way, perpendicular. You see perpendicular and axonometric means parallel to the projection system. Alright, hopefully all of this makes sense. Okay, technical drawing is always going to be difficult. Okay, it's fine, don't worry about it. X, O, Z at the top. If you know computer software, you know, 3ds Max, Revit, you know, any 3D modeling software, you've got the same coordinate system. So just drawing a parallel to the LY axis, then obviously connecting everything up and you've got the little triangular section. Okay? Very good. Very good. So that's uh, one thing. And then we can go for the cast shadows. Obviously, the height is going to be a bit shorter than if it would stand on a, <coughs> on a, uh, basically on a, uh, you know, spatial diagonal on a tip. So you can just construct the cast shadow for this uh, edge here, this face here. Sorry, and then you connect it. Uh, you construct the cast shadow for the other three points. Because keep in mind, you we are going to have, going to have one point here, one. Sorry, yeah, uh, my software is acting up. Two. Yeah. Three. Okay. <laughs> Looks like a little heart. Come on.
okay, and the, the, uh, the overlap, one and three are the same and two is here, right? So these three points need to project on the ground. You connect them up, then you connect them to the extremities of the previous shadow projection, right? Again, what's a shadow? A projection, so according to a direction, you get a volume and you project it on a plane, flat plane, okay? Right, so if you've got any questions, um, let's see if there's any questions there, nobody in the chat, nobody, oh, that's fine, it's fine. Any questions, then uh, hit me up. Uh, I recommend you join the five-day intensive ASAP. You can also get, uh, you know, learn a lot from the uh, articles on my website. And, uh, you know, if you're serious about drawing, then I think the easiest way to start is just the uh, drawing vault, where you get two lessons a week. All right, and learn all this cool stuff. And obviously, you can send work for review. And that's the most important thing, like a lot of stuff. Read through this to figure out if it's for you, like. She enjoyed, yay, she enjoyed the classes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah she was, uh, my student was really good, yeah. Right, so if you've got any questions, then uh, let me know. And uh, talk to you soon. Take care. Send work over for review.